Welcome to another exciting edition of the GCN Tech Clinic, where myself and Alex aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions within the allotted time. Uh, as ever, you can submit your questions down below in the comments section using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to uh, get through as many of them as possible. Who's up first, Alex? It's Adrianos Phil Innis 5384 They say, hey guys, love your work. Oh, that's very kind, thanks very much. One question, my front disc rotor rubs on the brake pads when I stand up and pedal hard. It doesn't rub at all when I'm just checking or riding normally. I've centered the rotor many times, but haven't managed to get rid of the problem. I've got Shimano 105 hydraulic disc brakes and the Rubel CGR725. Any ideas on how to solve the problem? This is a problem I've had on a couple of different bikes in the past. And I found that what it is, is as I'm riding out the saddle, applying more force through it, a combination of a little bit of flex in the fork is meaning that the caliper can move enough to mm. just rub on the rotor. Can, yeah, was... can be flex in the, the, um, the wheel. Yeah, the as wheel well. as well. Um, yeah, it's basically, yes, most likely some flex occurring somewhere in the system. You can also notice it when you bank really fast and hard around a, um, a hairpin turn at high speed. Yeah. And you can get a similar sort of thing happening sometimes. The way well. I actually overcame this, um, I've got two, solu two solutions for you here. One, go down a rotor size, that'll help reduce the amount of flex there is because you're bringing everything closer to the central point. Two, is work out which way or which side it is that it's rubbing on when you're finding that it does, and then offset the caliper ever, ever so slightly and that was how I solved the problem. Yeah. A little but bit of trial and error. It's not the end of the world because it's only rubbing a slight bit and it's usually yeah, like it's not yeah. it's not the end it's an, it can be a bit annoying, but it's just annoying for me. It grinds my gears, that does. Um, next question have we got? Uh, Nick Waldrop 9302 who says, How do I know it's time to move on from my entry level bike to start to look for a better one? Or would you suggest start upgrading the entry-level one with nice components instead of a new purchase? Like, this is the eternal question. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> oh. When are you ready for a new bike or upgrading it? Well, for starters, it's whenever the hell you decide that you want to do it. Yeah. There is no right or wrong. You know, and if you can, you know, do, do whatever you can afford to do, and if you want to do it, do it. Yeah. Like, it's the same with anything, you know. You, you get to a point, you maybe you start off learning a musical instrument and you have, like, a beginner one and then you advance and you're like, I want a Stradivarius. <laughs> I, think, as, I think upgrade your bike to your heart's content as much as you want to do. I think as long as you're aware of differentiating between products and bikes that you maybe need or products and things that you maybe want. And it's also going to be diminishing returns the higher up the price list you get in terms of the performance you're going to yeah. get. Yeah, well, it's good advice. We've, we've done the, quite a lot of videos on this in the past which I suggest you, you check out. But always go for the, the biggest bang for your book upgrades, something which we've covered off before. Yeah, so. totally. Um, Graham Austin 9085 says, I presume chain packing grease is a hydrocarbon, so why do people insist every last bit is cleaned off before waxing? Surely the wax will dissolve any last trace of the grease that have been missed by a quicker clean. I don't know about hydrocarbons, they sound like something that would confuse me, but I do know about what to do in practice, and that is that if you don't clean all the grease off, it's going to stop the, the wax adhering to the chain as good as it could do. Yeah. 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 Simple answer. You'll be, <laughs> you know, one of the ways in which you reduce the friction um, of, of, the, of the chain is with the tungsten disulfide additive that is in, say, the, the Silca Super Secret wax and the drip on is that it's kind of smoothing out the surface of the, of the chain. So if you were able to look at the metal plates and the metal surface of a typical bike chain, you know, looking at it with the naked eye, it looks smooth. But if you looked at it under a powerful microscope, it would look like the Himalayas. You know, it would look like <laughs> yeah. a mountain range. And what you're doing is you're smoothing out that mountain range by filling in all the little crevices and, and valleys and peaks and troughs in that unsmooth surface with the uh, with the tungsten disulfide that goes in there. Now, if there's yeah packing grease remaining in there, that's not going to make the waxing process as effective. Um, and also, the grease burns at a very high temperature, so it's not like it's going to evaporate and, and come out yeah. or anything. It's not it's not a um, a volatile hydrocarbon. It's it's quite the opposite. So, yeah, strip it out first then wax. Mm, volatile hydrocarbons, just what I was thinking. <laughs> um, I have no idea where to start with this username. You want to help me out? Naomayoname. Six. Eight, six, eight, 
So, so what? I got the uh, numbers. They, at the hey end. guys, <laughs> I'm looking for a new bike. I was wondering if you'd choose a higher tier mechanical group set like Ultegra over 105Di2. Oh, that is a tough call. Um, there is no right or wrong answer. Off the cuff of it, having used lots of mechanical group sets and lots of electronic group sets, I think I would be slightly more prepared to go down a tier in order to get electronic shift in. I would say whatever you can get the best deal on. Oh, that's such a sensible answer. Like if, which, the, I mean, they're both, they're, they're different, but they're both excellent. So what you, it's whatever you can do to save your money and get the best price on either of those two things, get that. In terms of and usability. And then you've got a bit more money to spend on another upgrade. That's a good point. In terms of usability though, if you get an electronic group set set up correctly, in theory, you shouldn't have to make any adjustments. And the cables get worn out, you just got to charge it up. Mechanical group set, the cables eventually going to wear out and potentially break. But, you know, pros and cons of each, I guess. Yeah. Um, Next question. Nice, nice dilemma to have though. Both are great <laughs> yeah. options. Uh, Phil, Phil Wagner 1447 says, uh, since you travel so often with all your uber expensive bikes, what do uh, each of you prefer to use? A hard-sided bike box, soft-sided bag, or a cardboard box? <laughs> um, well, I've got a video that's, that, <clears> I've, that I've, I've not filmed yet that I've planned to discuss all this. Well, you go first. Well, what would be your preference? Of 100 million billion percent hard case. Well, that's just silly because you can't get more than 100. But yeah, I would choose a hard case bike box as well. I've traveled with a soft case um, bag as well and had no issues whatsoever, but my preference would always be a hard case one if possible. Yes, hmm. um, and uh, you know, the yeah, soft. I, I've seen people damage bikes in soft case bags. There are some very expensive soft case bags out there, but given the choice, I will always use a hard case. Yeah. Okay. Last question is from XC Russ. Have you investigated the fuel economy benefit when travelling with an aero bike and wheel set on the roof of a car versus a standard bike and wheel set? If not, can you? Some people may be interested in this as extra justification for buying N plus one. Well, with the current price of fuel, yeah. I think this is a that's what that's that's why we've got this question. <laughs> yeah. a truly alarming predicament we're in with the cost of fuel. Um, I think, yeah, there's it's fair to assume that? you would have a slight we can't investigate it. <laughs> no. But yeah, okay, Mainly yeah. because I can't be bothered. Common sense says an aero bike is going to reduce the amount of drag that the car exhibits. Ever so slightly. Yeah. I Ever really, so slightly. I wouldn't worry about it. It sounds like a good excuse to get buy a new a T, bike. Just get a TT bike, put that on the roof. Wouldn't even notice but, it. Yeah, probably maybe make your car faster. Fuel economy yeah. go up. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's it for this week's Tech Clinic. Um, hope everyone enjoyed it and we asked your questions. If we haven't, Please keep commenting your questions in the comments section down below and we'll get to them in the coming weeks. Mm. It is an important consideration though. Your, your fuel economy is going to drop significantly having a bike on the roof, even if it's an aero bike. So yeah. if you do want to save a bit of fuel and you can fit your car, your bike in the boot, <laughs> do it. All right, we're out of here. See you later. We're going to go put our car in our bike. Mm. <laughs> so you had something you wanted to just talk about. Oh yeah, there were comments on last week's uh, Tech Clinic about my incorrect uh, torque assessment where I said that a Newton meter was equivalent to one kilogram a meter away. That's 10 Newton meters. All right. And also it's not entirely like perfectly accurate because yes, the gravitational constant and all that crap. So, but it's like, give or take. It's slightly more than 10 kilograms, like a tiny amount, who cares? Somebody did, but we don't. 10 kilograms a meter away. <laughs> right, we're out of here for the second time. Bye. No, that's wrong. <laughs> 10 newton meters would be a kilogram. Yes. 10 newton meters is a bit more than a kilogram a meter away. I'd had a long night. We're definitely going. I now. mean, not a long night, a short night. I ain't had much sleep. Hmm. I was go now. A medium sleep. I need a rest. Mm, calibrate your sleep.